My gosh, this video really is wonderful. Is that Washington D- Oh, that's Benjamin Franklin! I know him! Wait, how- How would they get in such a steady shot? It's almost as if there's something floating or flying or, or, or gliding through space. How, how are they- Who are you? What? You want to learn how to do that? With the TVX 200, no less. I'll tell you. Abraham Lincoln! Now, for those of you annoyed by this accent, I'll tell you, I'll drop it in three, two, one. So basically, we're gonna do the glide cam with the DVX 200, put them together, and show how that process works. I already made a video of the HMC 150 with the glide cam. This is gonna be very similar. Here we go. Now the Panasonic AG DVX200 is a pretty heavy camera. In fact, I'll put the weight with and without all the accoutrements. But what I try and do is minimize that weight. And so, you know, I try and use the battery that it came with, that size battery, as opposed to the larger, higher capacity batteries, which are great for longer battery life, but they're heavier. So you wanna really minimize the weight on this thing. Also, take this off. You don't need this when you're glide camming. Unless you're maybe shooting into the sun, you don't want that lens flare. But otherwise, for the most part, you can leave this lens hood off. Now for the glide cam, basically I try to leave about a two second drop time, maybe a second and a half drop time from when it's horizontal to vertical. And as I add these pieces on, I try and kind of keep that in mind. Of course, the camera's gonna be here. So I usually give this end about four inches, about like that. Now, even though this is a Devin Graham model, Devin Graham himself will suggest that you have the camera facing exactly parallel with the way that the wings are going. I don't actually do that. I try and keep it more horizontal because a lot of times I've just, I've killed myself in the knee or I've been running or walking and I've actually kind of obstructed the, the natural balance because I've kind of hit a leg or something. Also, try and do this if you can. So spread out those wings which really adds with the forces that would have to be applied to turn this thing without meaning to. Maybe that's wind, or maybe that's you bumped it a little bit. Now, for the DVX 200, I have four plates on either side. The HMC 150, I think I used two. So four really helps, and then if you really need more drop time or less drop time, just adjust this as you need to, you know? You may not have the ability with the HD 4000 to raise and lower the axis gimbal like you can with the Devin Graham model, but you can certainly still adjust the length of this. You put the cam right on there, balance it pretty well, you know, just eyeball it. Now before you actually wanna balance this thing, you gotta to wanna to make sure the camera is on because you want the lens to be enacted in a certain place. If you're gonna use OIS, you wanna make sure that that's enacted and everything's going well, your focus is all set because when you do all that, you might adjust the balance of the camera. Now I'm also gonna zoom out all the way. Most of the time when I'm glide camming, I zoom out all the way. It just really helps with the stability of things. Obviously, we are front heavy at this point. So we'll turn the back. Now, of course, this is a Devin Graham signature model, so it's a little different from some others. HD 4000 might have a couple knobs you have to turn. I do have it looking downward just a little bit, and that's because if I'm looking straight at the horizon, if this was exactly up and down, you'd actually be looking a little bit too high in certain situations. Let's see what that drop time is. A little fast, a little fast. So what I'm gonna do, just because I can, I'm going to lower the gimbal just a hair. Now let's see. That's pretty good, not too bad, not too bad. I might add just a little more time. So I have manual focus right here and we are at six feet. And at this point, we're pretty well balanced. And for me, I'm always trying to improve on however the wind is gonna catch this thing. So that's part of why I've taken off the lens hood. I really don't wanna contend with wind getting in there and kind of pushing this off course. Now I see a lot of people doing this, like they'll hold it and they'll think that this is the way to go. You have a lot less power in your wrist when you're holding it like this. Hold it out more or less in front or maybe like a one o'clock position. And that gives you so much more power your arm is just naturally able to hold more weight that way. You wanna make sure that those motions with your left hand or your right hand, whichever hand you're using to balance and making those small fine tunes, 
are small fine tunes. You want it up here. You don't want it down here because you're going to be moving way too much with this camera. You want to, you kind of want to do the small little, tiny little motions up here, the small surgical motions, you know? A lot of people who watch me do this out in the field and stuff, they're like, is that heavy? How heavy is that? That looks really heavy. Well, actually, yeah, it kind of is. Uh, but you just kind of get used to it. You don't, you don't glide cam all the time. You try and kind of do it in spurts and then let yourself relax, you know, sort of stretch it out. And just so you can see how I balance this, I'm going to get into the shot here and I'm going to walk. I'm still always kind of keeping my right hand in front of it because that's the hand that I choose to hold it with. And my left hand is always kind of doing these little fine tunings and kind of making sure that this thing is up and down and steady. I also try to minimize that pendulum movement that you might see if ever you are at a standstill and then try and move. Of course, the thing is bottom heavy, essentially. That's what a glide cam is, sort of bottom heavy. So if you were to be at a standstill and all of a sudden move, your cam would point down and then come back up. So let me try it again. This time we're going to really isolate that pendulum movement. It went down and then back up. So the bottom is kind of swinging back and forth. Nip that in the butt at the beginning by keeping your thumb at the bottom. And then as you move initially, push against that pendulum movement and negate it. Well, now you know all of my tricks and secrets. I do hope you use that information only for good and for the advancement of humanity. Until then, please inquire if you have any more questions about Glycam usage, especially with the DVX200 or the HMC150, which is my secondary camera. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope you like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Until then, take care. Oh, that's dreadful. Well, now he's just showing off. <laughs>